In this Learn Electrics video, we'll look at how to find a ZS value when the fuse size that you need for the disconnection time that you need is not shown in the regulations book. And in this video, we'll make reference to the Amendment 2 Wiring Regulations book, the Brown book. A question that is often asked on social media, the fuse size that I want is not listed. How can I find the ZS for my test results. And one that was sent to me by email. I have a BS88-3 system C fuse at 80 amps and I need a ZS for 0 0.4 seconds disconnection time. It's not shown in table 41.2 of the regs. What can I do? Well, let's start by looking at this one. Look in the brown regs book and on page 67 you will find table 41.2. This table shows the tabulated ZS or earth fault loop impedance values for fuses that are required to disconnect in 0.4 seconds or less. If we look for BS88-3 system C fuses about halfway down the table, we see that the data stops at 63 amps. An 80 amp fuse does not exist on this table. So what would the ZS be if we wanted it to operate in less than 0.4 seconds? And notice that the other fuses listed do not go past 63 amps either. Yet we know that bigger sizes are available. What can we do? Turn now to page 411 of the book. This is figure 3A1 and shows the current and time curves specifically for BS88-3 system C fuses. These are sometimes called the response curves or tripping curves and each fuse type will have its own unique curves. Of most help to us is the chart shown at the top right. This table lists data values above the 63 amps shown on page 67 and the 80 amp fuse that we need data for is shown here. But these are not ZS values. They are the amount of fault current that must flow in order that the fuse disconnects the supply in the required time. How can we use these numbers to find ZS? Let's work our way to an answer. We have the correct table. The heading tells us that this is the chart for BS88-3 System C fuses. Make sure that you are starting out with the correct chart, the correct information. We need data for a 0 0.4 second disconnection time, so find the appropriate column and follow it down. On the left hand side of the chart is the available fuse ratings. Find the row for 80 amp fuses. Where the 0 0.4 second column and the 80 amp row cross each other, is the answer that we need for the calculation. An 80 amp BS88-3 system C fuse will need 800 amps of fault current to trip in 0.4 seconds or less. On page 409 we find this equation. It's actually very easy to use and what the symbols mean is all explained on the same page. We want to know ZS the tabulated value of earth fault loop impedance. To do that, we will need to know U0, the nominal AC voltage to earth, which is taken as 230 volts for most UK installations. C min is the minimum voltage factor, an adjustment that the regulations want us to make to allow for voltage variations, and this is given as 0 0.95. And IA is the information that we've just found in the response chart, the current and time data for the fuse in question. So, we're now ready to go. Putting the numbers into the equation, we have 230 volts multiplied by 0 0.95 and then divided by IA, which in this case is 750 amps. The calculator gives us 0 0.29133 which we can round down to two decimal places to arrive at 0 0.29. Ohm's law tells us that voltage 
divided by current will give us ohms. So our answer is Zs equals 0 0.29 ohms. Do we round up or do we round down? There is always so much discussion about this, and here we will follow the mathematical rules on rounding decimal places. For most electrical work, we will round our calculations to two decimal places. This means that only two numbers are shown after the decimal point. To do this, if the third decimal number is less than 5, between 0 and 4, the two numbers after the decimal point will stay the same. If the third decimal number is 5 or above, add 1 to the second decimal number. Sometimes this makes the first decimal number change as well, as we shall see. Shown here are some examples of rounding up or down. If we are rounding to just two decimal places, we only need to look at the third decimal place. No further back than the third number to the right of the decimal point. This will tell us our next move. If the third decimal number is five or more, it will affect the second number, but sometimes it will influence several numbers. Look at the bottom two rows of the chart. 0 0.299 will affect all three decimal numbers, making the answer 0 0.30, or just 0 0.3. The bottom row starts off as 1.9988. The third number is an 8, and this ripples through all the numbers to make 2.00, or just 2. Now that we know about rounding up and down, try a BS88-3 System C fuse at 100 amps. Find the ZS for a 0 0.4 second disconnection time, using the same table as before, on page 411. Find the 0 0.4 second column, find the 100 amp row, and where they meet we will find the required fault current. It tells us that a 100 amp BS88-3 system C fuse will need 1050 amps of fault current to trip in 0 0.4 seconds. Now we can use this information in the calculation. It will be the same formula as before. In fact, the top row of the formula uses the same numbers. All that changes is the number below the line. Putting the numbers into the calculator, we have 0 0.20809, and we can round this up to 0 0.21. Our answer, the tabulated ZS, is 0 0.21 ohms. Now look at BS3036 fuses. These will have different current and time characteristics and a different ZS. This example will be the 100 amp BS3036 fuse. Looking at table 41.2 on page 67, we can see that 100 amp fuses are not listed for 0 0.4 second disconnection times. But this is not a problem to us now. We can make an easy calculation and work it out for ourselves. The data for the current and time response curves for BS3036 fuses is spread across two pages. This was done in order to make the reading of the graphs easier. The data that we need for a 100 amp device will be on page 413. Look at the chart at the top right. Find 0 0.4 seconds, find 100 amps, and where they cross, we have a required fault current, IA, of 1200 amps. Pause the video and attempt the calculation yourself. The answer is on the next slide. The same formula is used again. Putting these numbers into the calculator, we have 0 0.18208 as an answer. The tabulated ZS for this question can be rounded down to 0 0.18 ohms. And now, time for a little practice yourself. Five very quick and easy calculations for BS88-2 system E and G fuses. Make an attempt at these. The process of attempting them 
will reinforce your understanding. Calculate the tabulated ZS values for the BS88-2 system E and G fuses that are not shown in Table 41.2 on page 67. The five fuse ratings are as shown in the yellow box. All you must do is to find the required fault current for each rating and then calculate the tabulated ZS values, rounding up or down to two decimal places. You'll find these tables on pages 414 and 415 of the regs. Find the required current IA for each fuse rating. It is the same formula as before. U0 and C min are unchanged, so the top row will be the same. All that we need to do is to put new numbers into the bottom row. Pause the video and make your five calculations, and the answers are on the next slide. Here are the answers. I've put them into a small chart for ease of understanding. Hopefully, your answers have come pretty close to mine. Some books will round up or down to be mathematically correct, while other books will always round up, and then again, some books will always round down. The difference in impedance or resistance values will be just three or four thousandths of an ohm, an incredibly small difference. Most times, your ZS readings will be well below the maximum permitted, and this difference will not then be a problem to you. Use the tables and figures shown in Appendix 3. Find the minimum fault current for the required disconnection time. This will be IA. Use the formula shown in the video to calculate the tabulated ZS. Round up or down as required. These will be tabulated values. To find ZSM, the measured ZS for direct comparison with your test meter on site, multiply the tabulated value by 0 0.8. And we will leave a link in the description to a video on the 80% values on tabulated ZS and measured ZS. We hope you've enjoyed the video and that you've added a little more knowledge to your mental toolbox. And we thank you for watching. It really is appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can always type in Learn Electrics or one word into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.